good morning students how are you all i hope that you are all fine today's topic is blood so without wasting any time let's start the topic so what is blood what is blood well blood well blood is a fluid connective tissue so what is blood blood is nothing but a fluid connective tissue now the question is what is a fluid what is a fluid well <clears throat> fluid is anything it is anything that can flow so what is a fluid now anything that can flow can be defined as a fluid so ability to flow is called a fluid so blood is a fluid connective tissue now why it is called connective tissue because blood it connects it connects it connects to different different parts of a body since blood connects to different parts of a body so it is called a connective tissue okay so what is blood blood is a fluid why it is called fluid blood is called a fluid because it has the ability to flow over here we i am writing it ability ability to flow blood has the ability to flow and hence it is called a fluid and it is also a ability to flow blood has the ability to flow and hence it is called a fluid and it is also a connective tissue why it is a connective tissue because it connects to different parts of a body simply i can say suppose over here i have two villages one is a and the other one is b okay one is a okay chalo one is a and the other one is b so these are the two villages this is village 1 and this is village 2 suppose there is a road that connects these two village suppose it is a road it is a road what is the main function of the road it it connects village a to village b so it is so similarly blood also connects this suppose the organs of the body all the organs of the body gets connected by the blood okay so hence it is a connective tissue why it is called blood is a why it is a connective tissue because blood blood it connects to different 
parts of a body like the like the road it connects the two villages a and b similarly since blood connects to different parts of a body hence we can say that blood is a fluid connective tissue okay now we will discuss about the composition of blood okay now centrifugation of a blood sample shows the presence of different components now the question is what is centrifugation <clears throat> right now the question is what is centrifugation now centrifugation is a process where the blood samples when it is collected with the help of a machine it gets rotated at a very very high speed okay so what is centrifugation centrifugation is a process where with the help of a machine we will rotate the blood samples at a very high speed for a few minutes then <clears throat> what will happen now suppose over here it is in a test tube we have collected a blood sample this is a blood sample next what we do we do we do the process of centrifugation so over here blood samples this blood sample rotates it with the help of a machine it rotates at a very very high speed for a few minutes then what happens is very interesting suppose this is the test tube so over here we can see that the lighter particles it floats in the upper surface while the denser particles it will sediment towards the bottom okay so i am repeating once again what happens over there is that after the process of centrifugation we observe these things in the blood sample okay what happens is over here is that the lighter particles it means the plasma particles it appears over the top and the sample okay what happens is over here is that the lighter particles it means the plasma particles it appears over the top and the denser particles especially the rbcs it sediments or it settles towards the bottom and in the middle we have wbc and platelets so the plasma it is being lighter it floats towards the top the rbc being denser than plasma it settles towards the bottom and the wbc or the platelets it forms it appears in the middle between the plasma and the rbcs okay as we can see here 55% of space occupied by the plasma 45% of the space get occupies by the rbcs and less than 1% space into it over here in the middle portion gets occupied by wbcs and the platelets okay so this is all about the composition of blood okay thank you
ओके नेक्स्ट इज द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ ब्लड सो ब्लड इज बेसिकली कॉम्पोज ऑफ थ्री पार्टिकल्स थ्री बेग योर पार्ट इन थ्री सब्सटेंसेस वन इज प्लास्मा अदर वन इज डब्ल्यू बी सीज एंड द प्लेटलेट्स एंड द अदर वन इज आरबीसी और एरिथ्रोसाइट्स सो प्लास्मा ऑक्यूपाइज फिफ्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ ब्लड फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ ब्लड ऑक्यूपाइज बाई आरबीसी which are also known as erythrocytes okay and less than 1% of blood are composed of wbcs which is also known as leukocytes and platelets also known as thromboplasts okay blood is red in color because of rbcs okay rbcs contain a pigment called hemoglobin hemo hemoglobin yes so the red color of blood is because of a respiratory pigment respiratory pigment called hemoglobin that is why blood is red in color okay so once again i am repeating about the composition of blood blood is basically composed of three substances first one is plasma that which occupies 55% next one is rbcs or the erythrocytes which occupies 45% it contains a pigment called is called it contains a respiratory pigment called hemoglobin and for this reason blood is red in color okay and the last one is wbc and platelets that occupies less than 1 per okay so now i am discussing the composition of blood in a little details so first thing is the plasma okay how much percentage is occupied inside the blood it occupies 55% it occupies 55% of blood now the question is what is a plasma now plasma is a fluid matrix on which blood cells are embedded so it is a fluid matrix i have already described that what is a fluid so it is a fluid matrix on which ba over over uh, there the blood cells are embedded for example if you have one room okay and on that room you have one chair one table two sofas okay But the free space is air clear so consider that in the blood one chair can be considered as wbc one table can be considered as the platelets two sofas can be considered as rbcs and the free space that is occupies in which occupied inside the room as air over here in the blood the free remaining place is nothing but the plasma so plasma is a fluid matrix on which blood cells are embedded okay now what about the composition of plasma well in plasma 
प्लास्मा हैज 90 परसेंट वाटर 8 परसेंट प्रोटीन्स सम इंपॉर्टेंट प्रोटीन्स डेट आई विल डिस्कस्ड अ बिट लेटर 2 परसेंट ऑक्यूपाइड बाय इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स हार्मोन्स एंड न्यूट्रिएंट्स ओके थैंक यू नाउ वन इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन डेट इज Why blood flows smoothly? You may ask. That sir, why blood flows smoothly? The answer is plasma. Yes, because of the plasma, blood flows smoothly. Okay. Next is what are the proteins of plasma? Well, plasma has three types of proteins. First is fibrinogen. Now, what is the main function of fibrinogen? The main function of fibrinogen is blood clotting. Now, the question is, what do you mean by clotting? Well, have you ever think that in case of any injury, will the suppose if you cut your hand? will blood flow continuously no the answer is no why because there are something that resist the flow of blood and what happens the blood clots so who help this in blood clot clotting it is nothing but the fibrinogen so fibrinogen is a protein which helps in blood clotting next type of protein that is found inside the blood is globulin what is the main function of globulin it helps in defense mechanism of our body our okay and the last category of protein that is present inside the plasma is albumin what is the main function of albumin it maintains the osmotic balance okay okay so previously we have learned about the plasma okay so previously we have learned about the plasma blood plasma now in this section we will study about the three major components of blood that is about the rbcs about the wbcs and the platelets well rbcs are as the name suggests they are red blood cells so they are often known as erythrocytes they are red in color okay so what are the unique features about the rbcs these are small cells without nucleus it means they do not have nucleus in their cells they perform a very very important function what they perform they carry oxygen from lungs to different body parts so what is the major function it it helps in transportation of substances okay so the major function of rbcs they carry oxygen from lungs to the different body parts hence it helps in the transportation of essential substances in the blood next over here <clears throat> we will study about wbcs or white blood cells also called as leukocytes they are called leukocytes <clears throat> they are nucleated cells now nucleated cells means they have nucleus a true nucleus in their cells what is their main function 
they fight against infection and builds immune system now the question is what is immune system <clears throat> now immune system is that system that is present in the body that helps to prevent infection so immune system it prevents infection it prevents infection it prevents infection so immune system what is okay so what is the main function of the immune system it fight against infection it means immune immune system prevents infection now the question is why it is called white blood cells please recall what you have learned during the centrifugation process of a blood sample over there we have think we have seen that after the process of centrifugation of the blood sample between this two layer this layer is called the plasma and this layer occupies by rbcs so between this two layer there is a white layer of nucleated wbcs so since for its white appearance it is known as white blood cells okay lastly we will discuss briefly about the platelets platelets are smaller in size the main function of platelets is blood clotting similar to that of a protein that is named as fibrinogen okay so main function of the platelet is blood clotting okay so that's it for this session thank you so students in this video i have described about the blood composition of blood types of blood cells so if you like this video do share and subscribe my youtube channel thank you so much